everyone. Today, I'm going to be speaking about the polymer xanthan. So I have divided this video in four different parts. That is the introduction, the upstream and the downstream processes involved in the production of xanthan, and finally, the applications of xanthan. So let's get started. In the introduction, we have to basically answer three different questions. What is xanthan? Who produces xanthan? And when is xanthan produced? Now, what is xanthan? Xanthan is a heteropolysaccharide. It has five sugar residues. As you can see in the image, the backbone is composed of D-glucose that are linked by an alpha-1,4 bond. At every alternate glucose, at the C3, we have the side chains, that is the trisaccharides. These are made up of mannose. And to the terminal mannose, we have another residue that is glucuronic acid. Now, at the non-terminal portions, we have acetyl groups. And at the terminal position, we have the pyruvyl groups. Now, acetyl and pyruvyl both have negative charge. And thus, xanthan is said to be polyanionic heteropolysaccharide. It has the molecular weight in the range of 2 into 10 raised to 6 to 10 raised to 7 Daltons. It is highly viscous, water soluble and non-toxic. Now, who produces this xanthan? It is produced by gram-negative plant pathogenic bacterium, Xanthomonas campestris. The numeric value that, can, that you can see on the screen is basically the industrial strain that is employed for the production of xanthan. Now, when is xanthan produced? So as it is a secondary metabolite, it is produced in the stationary phase of the growth cycle. Now moving on to the next part, that is the upstream processes. Now in the upstream processes, we will do the media formulation, followed by the process parameters, and finally the bioreactor design. In the medium, I've basically focused on the three main components. First one, that is our carbon source. So the carbon source usually employed for the production are glucose, cornstarch syrup, citrus waste. If you want industrially very pure grade of xanthan, then we go for glucose syrup, or else we can use any other raw materials that I have listed here. The optimum concentration is found out to be 2 to 5%. Below 2%, it doesn't allow the growth of the organism, that is the carbon source is not sufficient. And above 5%, there is no detrimental effect on the production of polyla, but it is neither increased. So this may be due to the catabolite repression. The next important parameter is the nitrogen source. Ammonium, nitrate, yeast extract, peptone, these can be used as a source of nitrogen. The optimum concentration found out is 0.05% to 1%. Now maintaining this nitrogen is a little tricky. Why? Because in the growth phase, we require larger amounts of nitrogen to support the growth of the organism. But xanthan is produced in a nitrogen limiting condition. So for the production of xanthan, we will require a nitrogen limiting condition. Thus, a compromise has to be made between this and a particular monitoring of this process is very much required. Next is we require an enhancer that is citric acid. So 0.09 to 0.18% is sufficient. Now what does citric acid do? It is basically a chelating agent. It prevents the heat precipitation of xanthan. So further you will see in the downstream that we do a heat precipitation step. So in that we will have this utilization of citric acid. Now next, the process parameters. So we are going to be talking about four main parameters. Firstly, that is the pH of the medium. The growth of xanthomonas happens at a pH of 6 to 7.5, whereas the optimal pH for the production of xanthan is 7. Now, during the production phase, what happens is certain organic acids are synthesized, due to which the pH of the medium drops below 5. And if this happens, there will be no production of xanthan. Thus, Careful monitoring, addition of antiform agents is very essential and we have to monitor this pH. Next, temperature. So optimally, it is 30 to 33 degrees Celsius. Now temperature basically plays a role on the molecular weight of the xanthan. 
Now, how is it so? Now, basically, the temperature regulates the acetylation. Higher temperature, higher acetylation, higher the molecular weight. But as you know, we can't keep increasing the temperature as it will be detrimental to the organism. Next parameter is the oxygen profile. Now, xanthomonas is an obligate aerobe and thus it requires continuous aeration. What happens is during the later phases when higher amounts of xanthan is produced, the media becomes highly viscous and thus aeration is a problem at that point. So care must be taken to continuously aerate the mixture. Next, the time of fermentation. How much time is required? So it is observed that at 48 hours, we get maximum yield of xanthan beyond which there is no significant production of xanthan. Last part in the upstream processing is the bioreactor design. So the most commonly employed bioreactor is the stirred tank bioreactor. Now the stirred tank bioreactor can be operated in two modes. First one is the batch mode and second one is the continuous mode. We all know what is batch and what are its advantages. But as you know, the disadvantage of batch mode is that there can be catabolite repression. This can be overcome by using the continuous mode. But continuous mode is not employed. The reason is that there are a lot of sterility issues accompanied with that. So thus, mainly in the industry, stir tank reactor in the batch mode is operated for basically two days. The next one is the immobilized bioreactor. This is come into importance just lately. Basically, on different support matrices, the cells are immobilized and utilized. Now, what is the advantages? You get higher surface area. Okay, it's better for production. But the drawback is that the xanthan produced gets clogged inside this. And thus, the extraction out of xanthan out of the medium becomes more tedious and then the process gets sound to be expensive. Thus, it is not that much use, but research is going on in this particular area. Next one is the downstream processing. Now, in the downstream processing, the first step, as you know, after the production process is over, the cells have to be separated. Now, cells are not our desired product. The desired product is the polysaccharide. So for that, we will have to separate the cells. Now, for this, we have to do a pre-treatment of heat. So pasteurization at around 88 to 130 degrees Celsius is carried out. This step not only hel helps in the cell lysis, but also it helps to dislodge the particular xanthan that is present at the boundaries of the cell. Next, it is ultra, ultra filtration is done. After ultra filtration, the filtrate is subjected to alcohol precipitation. 95% of ethanol is used for this process, uh, for this precipitation step, followed by which it is washed. Then another step of uh, precipitation and washing is carried out. Finally, it is then either centrifuged or it is filtered. The filtrate is then subjected to drying. So basically we can do drum drying here. And after that, the xanthan gum is obtained. The supernatant is basically uh, distilled. So you can extract the alcohol out and you can reuse it. And the remaining product is just discarded. So this is the gist of the downstream processing involved in the xanthan production. And finally, we come on to the last part that is the application of xanthan. So xanthan finds its applications in a huge amount of uh, areas and the global need of xanthan is going on increasing as years pass. So mainly it is used in uh, your juices and uh, sauces, etc., to give it a particular texture and a body. So it is used as a boarding agent. It is used as thickeners in uh, toothpaste and many other products because it is one, non-toxic, two, it is viscous. Third, because of its viscosity, its stability in a wide range of acids uh, and lower concentrations of salt as well as at temperature, it is used in the salad dressings. Salad dressings and many other food products in order to give them that viscous nature. Thickening agent again in cosmetics. So pure uh, xanthan is used in cosmetics to give that particular body and the thickness to the lipsticks. It is used as a stabilizer. So basically when we use a shampoo, we get that lather, the foam that can be, that can be stabilized by using xanthan. It is used in oil industries for basically drilling out oil. This is due to the property that xanthan shows of thermal resistance. So it is very resistant to a range of pHs and a range of temperatures. 
And finally, the last property, the last application is flowability. So it allows to prepare a uniform dis uh, dispersion of the particular uh, xanthan in the pesticide and it can easily be sprayed. So these are the basic applications and all the process that you need to know for xanthan. Thank you for listening to the video.